Hello. Today I'm going to be discussing my Red Wing Iron Ranger 8111s. There's a lot of reviews on these boots. This is the Amber Harness. I've had this boot for roughly two years now. I've worn it quite a bit. You might notice a difference in this boot compared to other 8111s and that is two, di two things is I put a false tongue in here to protect it and I put leather laces on it which I like a lot better than their laces that they have. Uh, they're durable and I think they look pretty cool but they do need to be conditioned. So I'll talk a little about this boot. This is the model before they came out with the uh, the traction on them. This is that nitrile cork sole that's really smooth and the heel as well. I use these I use these a lot for yard work actually. Um, they're good for yard work as long as I'm on a flat surface and it's not too wet outside. If it's wet it's they're slick and I use a different boot with traction on them but as far as doing yard work goes nothing sticks to the bottom of them so I can uh, transfer from going outside to inside without making the wife angry at me. So I can just wipe them off with my my boot cleaner, um, whatever you call it, where you scuff your boots up and they'll take off whatever residuals on them, but typically nothing sticks to them. Uh, a good solid boot, it's not too thick a leather and not too thin either. Um, I'm gonna say they have I bought these in a size 10D, so the sizing on them, I normally wear a 10 and a half in Nikes or Vans or something like that. Um, I bought these in a 10D, and they're a little big still, but the 9 and a half D was a little too short. So I was stuck in the middle of those two, so what I did was I added this insole to them, which helps out tremendously. It's a real thin insole very comfortable but what they do is they they add that little bit of uh width or the, that little bit of uh cushion to their the boot to make me be able to fit this boot properly and they're more comfortable because this has that hard leather uh insole which your foot forms to which is comfortable but when they're when they're just that little bit too big i feel like it your your boot your foot's slipping around too much and i i just I'm not comfortable with that at all. So it feels like a slipper a little bit. I like my boots tight. Um, the couple things I don't like about this boot, and I wish they would have changed, is the heel is is not wide enough. I like a wider heel. I like a wider base to feel stable. And this is really not a very wide heel at all. And it wears quickly. And I don't wear this on, uh, I don't wear this like when I go to work. That's not a comfortable boot for that. Great for yard work. Great for if you want to do a couple simple work projects. But if you're going to go stand on concrete, not the ideal boot at all. You're going to be miserable in my opinion. Uh, the other thing I, I really find to be difficult to take is that they didn't put a false tongue in. I think that the tongue on this is really thin and if you, uh, you know, after time, these eyelets here, they tend to get little burrs on them and you're going to cut into your uh, false tongue and your laces eventually. If it, it just felt like it was the right thing to do to protect the tongue on this boot. When I go to resole these, I'm going to go with a wedge sole actually i'm going to give a wedge sole a shot made by thoroughgood uh the max wear wedge sole i'm a big fan of that sole and they make it in black so i'm going to put a black wedge sole on this and i'm going to ask them to keep it wider down here for me uh like i have on my thoroughgood 814 4200s these were just worn recently i did a bunch of yard work so i'm going to go ahead and clean them up or at least one, show you kind of what I do. I'll start with taking out the laces. 
And like I said, they're leather laces and they're from Whites. It's, they are, Whites makes the best leather laces. I've had Nick's, I've had uh, Drew's Boots version of their leather lace. I don't know if it's theirs or if they buy them from somewhere, somewhere else, but uh, my Whites laces always come through for me. They always last a long time. Um, mine are in desperate need of an oiling. They're, you don't want to oil them too much so they get they, they get they can break, but they're starting to crack. They've been in here for a long time. As you can see, the tongue on this is gusseted up to the fourth fourth eyelet right before the speed lace begins. I'm sorry, the other thing on this is this is a $319 pair of boots and the speed laces on these are junk. Come on, Red Wing, let's get with the program and get some better speed laces. Uh, we need to get something on these that are that don't bend on you. I can push on that if I wanted to and collapse that. Now I have like on my Thorough Goods um, and even on some of my other Red Wings uh, that I have that have speed laces, they're better than this. For $319, I want the best on this and I feel, I feel like they skimped on that and there was no reason to do that. Uh, it's a good boot. I'll probably have this boot the rest of my life as long as this, you know, the leather uh, gets taken care of by me. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it and keep resoling it. I do enjoy it. I think it's a very handsome boot. Look at that boot. It's just good looking. It reminds you of old times, you know, uh, before I was born. When you look at pictures of those guys doing work in the old days, this is the style boots they were wearing. And this one has this beautiful handsome look about it. I think one of the best looking boots on the market as far as this style. Uh, I love the way the toe cap com or the toe comes up. This has that toe uh, cap on it. Triple or quadruple stitched. Triple stitched around here and throughout the back is triple stitched. They really did a great job with the stitching. No complaints on the way this boot is built with the exception of like the cheap eyelet, uh, eyelets. I wish they'd throw a false tongue in. I just went to uh, Baker's Boots and bought me some false tongues and cut them down because they were too long. So I cut them down to where I wanted them to be. Anyway, so when I take these out, typically what I find is I've got a lot of, because I do yard work, I got a lot of grass and debris, yard debris in here. So I'll take a horsehair brush and I'll brush it out from the tongue area. You want to get that area really good because it really tends to build up and that can be a cause uh, cause a lot of drying issues once you get dust and dirt and debris this area will dry up on you and I can see now that a horsehair brush isn't going to take all of it out so I'll use a little bit more of a coarse brush and I'll brush those areas where possibly grass is stuck or what have you I'll take my horsehair brush all the way around the boot getting that welt what I always find is that no matter how much I horsehair brush that in the well is grass and dirt. So I use just a, it's, it's not too coarse, but it's a bristly style brush and I'll get in that well. Some people use a toothbrush, which is fine. Um, this has worked well for me and I don't even know where I got it or where I picked it up at. I've had it for years and it's now in my boot box here where I keep a lot of my stuff for cleaning boots and what have you. So I typically try to brush these down um, whenever I wear them. Whenever I wear any of my boots at the end of the day I'll just take my horsehair brush and give them a quick brushing. Th these I did not because I knew I was going to do this little video and I figured it'd be a good opportunity to go through and clean them up in front of the camera. I'm only going to do one boot today. In, in, as far as in front of the camera goes I've got a lot of I've, I've done a lot of painting in this boot I've got red little speckles to it you know what all that stuff adds character to your boots um, I've scraped off some of the paint and stuff but I'm not so concerned with it I actually like the way of all the little nooks and, or all the little scrapes and the nooks and crannies of this boot I can see where I've been what I've done like oh this day here I painted, you know, part of my house or this day here where I got this scratch is because of this and they just look great. I now don't get me wrong. I don't want globs of paint, but the little speckles of it just adds character in my opinion. 
Um, you probably don't see that there, but that they do have little speckles of paint and that's fine with me. But anyway, back to business. So clean up that welt really good. That's important. You want to get the, the welt on this boot cleaned up as best as you can before you oil it. Otherwise, you're just trapping dirt um, in the welt. So they're not in such bad shape where I need to use saddle soap. Now, I'll use saddle soap to clean dirt off. If my boot is super dirty, I will take saddle soap and I'll, I'll get it really foamy and I'll clean my boot, wipe it down, and then I'll oil it up. But for today, it's it, they're not that bad. So I'm just going to now brush them down with the horsehair brush again. Now that I feel I've got a lot of that, um, there's a small little applicator brush is what they, they call these. And I'm just kind of brushing off the, the welt part with that too, because I do have some dirt built up on it. And that little um, coarse brush is getting the actual finder out. So anyway, that should that should do me for now. So I, <laughs> I use a bunch of different products, different boots, and I'm always trying out different things from mink oils to uh, boot oils. Now the best, in my opinion, as far as a leather conditioner goes, is Lexol. You can buy Lexol on. Uh, online you can buy a bottle like this for about eight bucks what i do is i buy uh they have a cleaner and a conditioner and i buy a three liter thing of this for 25 bucks or something like that on amazon and then i just refill my little initial bottle i didn't know they sold it in that big of a bottle um, when i bought the first one but now i just fill this guy up here and it works out great so Anyway, I'm going to use, shake up the Lexol first. Oh, don't forget your false tongue. If you plan on having a false tongue in your boots, regardless of what boot it is, some people like the Iron Ranger without false tongue. I like mine with it, so I'm gonna wanna clean that up, get both sides of that cleaned up really good. Some, some folks will put it rough out and then you have your smooth. On my Iron Ranger, I have a smooth. Some of my boots I do rough out, but if you want to do rough out, what you'll, I've had it on the smooth side, so the rough out parts kind of smooth it out. But you can take and get that rough out look back by taking an abrasive brush and scraping it back up, and you'll see where it starts to get rough out look again. But I'm just going to go back with the, the smooth look kind of matches this boot up almost perfectly. When I bought the um, false tongues, I think they were eight bucks, uh, something like that. Anyway, they, they had a little bit of a different tone to them, but now that they've aged, they, they match that pretty darn good for, for what it is. Okay, so again, with the Lexol, whoo, don't be afraid to put it on your hands. It's perfectly fine. And I will just rub that Lexol all over this boot it's a great product I use it on my whites bounty hunter boots they are made of bison leather and there's nothing else I'll put on there I won't even use a boot oil afterwards just the leather um, conditioner alone but on this I will take the Lexol and I'll rub it all over this boot. And then I'll put a boot oil. Sometimes I'll use the shoe grease. At times, this is like Obanoffs, it's called Oregon Trail Company. I feel it's not as waxy as the Obanoffs and you get it from Baker's Boots um, in Eugene, Oregon. You can order it on their website, bakershoes.com, I believe it is. And I think it's a better product and doesn't cost as much. So, anywho get that and it, this is pretty uh, thin it's not a really thick deal here so you just want to make sure you get it in your in your uh, gusseted tongue area real well because that's where a lot of that debris gets trapped and just sits there and you and you don't brush it out every day typically unless you're taking your laces off so that stuff gets trapped in there let me get my wedding ring off 
and it dries it out. So just make sure you pay close attention to that area and get it nice and nice and uh, conditioned up. So I'm gonna review, where do I, okay, I missed a couple little spots. You can use a rag if you'd like. I don't mind getting my hands and feeling, I love the feel of leather, so I don't mind getting my hands on this leather and feeling my leather, feeling that boot, where does it need to be, taking a look at, get them, uh, get your sew, sewn areas real well too. You wanna to get that stitching conditioned up really well. This is not a waterproofing agent by any means. It is a conditioner and it will condition the boots really well. I've used other ones. I've used actual Red Wings conditioners before. Eh, not as not as good as this product at all, that's for sure. So you also have a leather area inside of here, right at the top of your um, boot on the inside. I just put a little bit there too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit on the welts. Just along the welt like this. Just let it kind of come out of the boot or out of the bottle. And rub it down with your finger inside the seam. Get it in there really good. I'll take my applicator brush now and push it down into that welt, that Goodyear welt. Yeah, and that'll come out really nice. Perfect. Now I can take Oh, somebody took my rag out of here. That's all right. I use my other horsehair brush just to get that stuff out of there, the residual. And you can see it darkened the boot a little bit. But that leather conditioner does not permanently darken it, and that boot, when it dries back up, will pretty much lighten up to this color again. So it soaks in fast. If your boot's in need of some love, which I haven't conditioned these in a while, well, I don't remember the last time, but it's been a little bit, not too long. I usually try to be good with my boots and take care of them, but it's, it's been a little bit of time. So they're soaking in that leather conditioner pretty well. Yes, they are. I'll get up close with that so you can see the difference between the two. Alright. The other thing while well, that's drying and it's a it's, I live in the Pacific Northwest so we have funny weather here. It was raining and pouring earlier and now it's nice and sunny. So I'm lucky enough to be doing this in the sun where this boot will dry quickly just on the, in the sun. While I'm doing that I'm going to do my false tongue and my leather laces. All I'm going to do for my leather or my false tongue and I'm going to put a little bit of that conditioner on there. I'm going to rub it in and I'm going to rub it in on both sides. Just like that. Then for my laces, as simple as this, take, I take my laces and I put them in my hand with a little glob of this. Let them dry and I'll be back.